as we talk to local authorities about the transition and the kind of service they'll be um, uh, commissioning from October next year, they're very interested in um, what the service can offer, how we can describe both the service offer and the impact of the service, and then how we can demonstrate in terms of health outcomes and in terms of best value that health visitors with their big range of uh, skills um, are really working uh, as a profession and as partners to improve things locally. They see the opportunity to commission the Healthy Child Programme as an opportunity to do a number of things and to join up public health services, children, young people from pregnancy, naught, through to 19, straight 25 is a, is a very key thing for them. Local authority commissioning is very important. It's the end of a journey as well as the beginning of one. It's the end of a journey of transformation um, under a national programme. And as part of that national programme, we did a lot of listening, a lot of listening to families and to health visitors, to health visitors students, to um, health organisations. And we got some um, fairly consistent um, information through that listening exercise. What do parents want to see? What um, were the issues facing the profession? What the issues facing organisations? And so towards the end of this, this national approach, what we needed to do was tie stuff together really well. And what we've got is we call it the 456 um, description of a transformed health visiting service. That's the four level service we've developed with the profession over the last four years. Um, the five mandated elements for local authority commissioning, which is essentially the child health reviews from antenatal to two and a half, and six high impact changes. So it's very easy to remember a four, five, six um, transformed model. In terms of the transition to local authorities, uh, what we need to always remember is this is a, is a transition of commissioning and that health visitors will, uh, health visiting services will be um, provided by current providers and I guess in the future potentially new entrants to the market and health visitors will be employed by um, current providers. So the kind of arrangements for appraisal and revalidation um, are provider based. So health visitors will still um, access that in the same way. The local authority will want to develop services for children, they will want to have conversations with the provider about the skills they want to see within the workforce that allow that service to um, be commissioned and to continue to develop. So I think it's not so much a matter of a, of, of, of a change that you would identify, it's a matter of having a, a wider local discussion around what do we need for our children and families services that are commissioned by the local authority, by the NHS, what is it we want to see as a really highly skilled child health workforce. Really important to, to show that health visitors are a critical part of the public health workforce. The focus of this is, is on the six, the six high impact changes. They were really important they are really important in terms of showing very clearly where using health visiting skills and knowledge can have a significant uh, impact. Well, we took a lot of soundings and it was a balance between um, the sort of top 10 things that people offered is very important. These six were seen as absolutely key. The six high impact changes are the transition to parenthood, so um, the antenatal and early weeks of years of life, um, the uh, perinatal maternal mental health, breastfeeding, the um, nutrition and physical activity for children, managing minor illness and reducing accidents, and healthy two-year-olds. The soundings I'm getting from health visitors is that it is really, really good, good to be able to say we are practicing in a way that's based on evidence and we can demonstrate and measure the impact we're having. And so really, our four, five, six, and particularly the six, um, is, is a way of health visitors being able to do that, whether that's to parents, the media, the commissioner, the provider, it actually gives us that uh, ability now. In terms of the 456 and how that 
translates into both education and um, into CPD. I think what it does is give a framework. And I think with revalidation, it's going to be really important for health visitors to think through what is it that I really um, prioritise to stay up to speed with so that I can um, feel confident in myself that I have um, the skills and the knowledge to practice in an evidence-based way and that I can um, demonstrate those um, obviously in the way um, I practice day to day but also when I come to revalidate. Really really important to stay up to date, a requirement coming in to demonstrate that, that's um, a responsibility for employer organisations to make sure there's the opportunity to do that and a responsibility for all of us in the profession to uh, think about um, the areas we want to pursue and how we would demonstrate that that's enabling us to practice in a competent and safe way. Education of, of um, nurses and midwives to become health visitors and then continuing professional development has been um, a really important factor of service transformation. And we may be at the end of the national programme, but actually continuing to deliver and develop high quality services is, is really important. And to do that, we need to continue to develop um, competent, confident uh, professionals. And what we're starting to see is people are um, wanting to have a general high level of competence across the six but then to maybe specialise. So we're seeing, well, I suppose the maternal mental health champions, domestic violence and abuse champions would be good examples, um, people who coordinate local efforts to improve breastfeeding, etc., etc. So I think it gives the option of a, of a framework for demonstrating competence across the priority areas.